Welcome to Vivino's Best. Here we are one more week. And the first thing I want to tell you is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again because you are awesome and you've been so nice and kind to me. So I am very grateful for that. And this week I want to talk to you about things that you need to know when you want to go global, when you want to be in international markets. There is certain things that I think you need to take into account. And of course, this is a very um, big theme and I could not just tell you everything in one time, but at least I would like to just give you a little bit of hints about what to do when we want to go international. The first thing is please narrow your markets and make your research. Be careful to try to just go everywhere. A lot of people is like, oh, I just want to go internationally. And they don't really select the market and they don't really make a good market research about the market. I've been long enough in the business, pretty much about 22 years, in order to understand what is the biggest mistakes that people do is they try to eat the whole cake at one time. And this is not a good idea. The best idea is to select one or two markets, really get to know these markets very well. And for that, you need to know what of the market is suitable for your product and which of the market that's gonna help you to work better. And in this case, I suggest really that you connect maybe with a chamber of commerce or with a trade office to help you to understand what is the framework that you have to navigate in this market. So it is very important that you do that. And after two or three years, and I would say, between three and five years, it takes really to be inside of a market that after that is when you can go and go to another market. I suggest you to do that. It's better to eat the cake little by little, but at least you are in a market to stay, not just running and try to do too much. And then at the end of the day, you might be very disappointed. I have seen this over and over again with a lot of people that I have the opportunity to work with, with a lot of companies that they took these decisions lightly and then they were in trouble and in this case i'd rather that you to do one two markets and do it right and then you go to the next one another thing it is important to understand is that you need to be very culturally sensitive that i would say that is the second tip that i will give you is to be culturally sensitive know which markets you're gonna go i know a fashion company for example that they just wanted to present a beautiful um, new collection and they decided that year to include some you know swimwear and what happened was that they were going to a country that it was very traditional and they didn't react too well when they saw women showing too much skin and in certain countries it is not acceptable so be culturally sensitive because when you create, for example, a fashion collection, what it was in this case, they were not taking into account that some people are very traditional and they don't really like to see the skin of people. They like to see clothes. So this is the things that we have to take really into account when we go to a different market. Is this product going to offend people? The way we present the product is going to um, bring people to feel uncomfortable? All of these questions we need to ask ourselves when we go to a different market, okay? Another thing is leverage with local experts. It is better that you really get the right people to talk to. Hmm. Sometimes the, not the whole information is in the books or in videos like this. Sometimes you need to really get to know the people and just ask people who really know about these things. And sometimes even people who already been there could be great, great people that could give you a little bit of insight about what to expect when you go to a market, give you the right advices. And there is many offices also that provide this, um, these opportunities to give you the information that you need. So it's very good that you do that. Another thing is learn the language. People feel so good when you speak your language. And sometimes, even if you don't speak great, just to make the effort to learn some words when you go to a market, it really make the trick. Know that people really relate with people who have, that we look like. So the moment that you just break the ice just to speak the other people's language, that is a great door opener. So when you go to a market, it's good that you make the effort at least to spend a few months learning the language, at least to navigate and just have normal conversations, even though that you might afterwards rely in a language of business, like it could be English. If you go to a Portugal market or Italy, or you go to 
uh, let's say, to an African market land, sometimes the local language, a little bit of words, and that it's really, really good. Another thing is establish a relationship with partners. Sometimes you want to eat the cake alone, but it's not good. Sometimes it's good to have partnerships. And even in some countries, it is required that at least 20% or 50% of the company might have to be in people, local people hands. And um, I think I suggest that you always have partnerships with people locally. You can have friends that they could give you the information, but when you want to really invest in a business there, sometimes it's better to find it. Another thing is, find the right people. If somebody comes to the United States and tells you, oh, I could just take care of the whole market, is not true. I will divide the American market in five markets. This is my experience because you have, the West Coast has nothing to do with the East Coast and how we do business. If you go to a market like Florida, it's also different. Texas is different. Chicago, M Michigan, all of the Midwest is different. So it is important that when you have a partnership that you have better a local partnership or somebody who knows the region, the area. But if somebody tells you that, oh no, no, I know the whole continent of Africa, it is very difficult that you have these kind of partners that they could just distribute all over or they could just um, have the potential to really reach out to all of these places. It's better sometimes to have regional people, partnerships that could help you little by little. And at the end of the day, you might grow much faster and better. <laughs> also focus in international marketing systems because sometimes the marketing that helps you back home, it might not help you in the new market that you're going. So it is important that there is certain things, systems of marketing that works globally. And let's say when you are in online, it's much easier because there is certain things that apply basically for all markets. But when it comes to the marketing standards of each country, they also have their own peculiarities. And sometimes you need to also combine the online with the offline. So take this into account and maybe you it's good that you also consult with a marketing company there and see what is the mechanisms to reach out better to people because at the end of the day, you want to sell your product. You want to become relevant in that particular market. So you better just um, know that there is systems yet yeah, that work globally and it's important that you use them, but also combine with the systems that are really uh, typical from that particular country. And just to wrap up, important is to set a billing system and to set a payment system that works for the market. In certain places, I remember when I came to the United States to do letters of credits, it was kind of offensive. Some people that didn't like that. And in Europe was perfectly okay. So it's good that you understand what is the billing systems that they have and how they like to get paid and what is the terms also to get paid. All of these peculiarities is important to take into account. Nowadays, we have a better time. When I started the international business 20 years ago, it was not so easy, but now we have all of these systems, uh, um, WISE, uh, Vimo, PayPal, so many different systems, and also the white transfers are much easier. And also the guarantees, the banking guarantees are also wider. So. This is basically things that you need to think about when you want to put your business overseas, when you want to bring your products overseas, or you want to bring yourself overseas. The same things apply, okay? This is it for today. It's just a briefing. But if you want to know more, please don't hesitate. Don't be shy. You can come to me and I will be very happy to just um, elaborate a little bit more or give you the literature that you could rely on to get more information about this. This is it for this week. I hope you have fun. Don't forget, I love you and I'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.